Asia Society in Austin. Ms. Chamberlain Bradley of Australia, Thailand, is discussing the excellent ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. First of, first of all, I think we will, uh, I will do my speech and why you can enjoy the dinner. So we enjoy the dinner. So this is my great pleasure for me to be here tonight. And this event brings together members and guests of Asia Society and the Asia, uh, Australia Thailand Business Council. And other distinguished guests, I consider you all to be friends of Thailand. And as a friend of Australia, I am honored to be visit visiting on this special occasion of the 60th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Australia and Thailand. And pleased to be in Sydney again for the second time in the past 24 hours. <laughs> Throughout the past six decades, Australia has been our close friend. From a partner in development to a major trade and investment partner, Australia has developed close relations with Thailand and Southeast Asia, and this has become more comprehensive and dynamic. Your country's economic achievements, technology advance, and outward looking policies to Asia are some of the reasons why many Thai companies look to Australia for investment and new business. On the other hand, there are so many reasons why Australia should expand trade and investment in Thailand. I don't know whether I say it's true or not. <laughs> For the political stability, after a successful election last year, where the people gave me a clear mandate, I'm pleased to say that the political situation is now more stable. We are moving forward quickly with national reconciliation by implementing the recommendation of the Truth Reconciliation Commission. My government has also approved compensation plan for all victims and past political violence. Last week, the first batch of compensation has been given to some, some of the victims. For the rule of law and democracy, this government is strengthening Thailand's democracy by promoting rule of law based on universally accepted standards. And we are making amendments to the constitutions, which will go through the process of parliament and decide from the, the view of the people. And in addition, we need to promote human rights and civil liberties as they are very important to enhance of the rule of law. To give you the update on the economic fundamental, fundamental we are, as we are aware that Thailand economy are badly affected by flood last year. But however, with the strong economic fundamentals, we have shown once again that we can recover very quickly from any crisis. The first quarter of this year, the result has been show up that Thai economy grew by 11% compared to the previous quarter, last quarter. And for this year, our economy is expected to grow strongly at 5.5 to 6.5 percent. And in addition, our fiscal position is outstanding. The foreign exchange reserves are at 180 billion US dollars. Public debt around 50, oh, sorry, public debt around 40 percent of GDP is much lower than the ceiling of 60 percent. This put the government is in a good position to finance major infrastructure projects and implement our economic policies. And I think for, our, for, for the location, we believe that Thailand are in the strategic location and with the connectivities, why I say that? 
because we we typically are located at the heart of Mekong region and the ASEAN communities of 600 million consumers. Thailand is committed to enhance connectivity further by investing around 74 billion US dollars on major infrastructure projects over the next five years. Moreover, we are working with Myanmar to develop the deep sea port. All of these projects are underway. And once completed, Thailand will be linked to Asia and beyond the efficiency, efficiently. For pro growth and business friendly policies to further, further promote more investment in Thailand, we have already reduced income tax this year to 23% from 30%. And we reduce further to 20% next year. I hope all Thai investors will be appreciated this year. As uh, our policy, we would like uh, for uh, helping on the reduce of the tax and to be more complete uh, for other countries. And in addition, we are also removing some of the barriers to encourage more cooperation to set up the regional headquarters in Thailand. Your investment will be supported by our skilled labor force. And also, I think we also hear all the feedback of our uh, investors. So we'll make sure that we will take care of all the, the things and we'll make sure that you are happy to be invest in Thailand. Gentlemen, with this stability, strong fundamental and growth, Thailand is ready to further support the Thailand-Australia partnership. Allow me to say a few words on how we plan further strengthen our relationship. I'm pleased to say that our trade, trading volume, has more than doubled after the Thailand-Australia free trade agreement in the year 2005. And last year's the trade reached some of the 16 billion US dollars. We are agreed to continue the trade volume further in the future. But I can't do alone. We need a lot of support from all of you here. <laughs> In other areas of our partnership, Thai and Australian cooperation are also strong. We share similar value of democracy, respect for human rights, and rule of law. So we both, both see the need to address challenges to regional and human security, such as transnational crimes and terrorism. For example, to reduce human trafficking and promote regional cooperation on this key issue, Thailand will set up the Bali process regional support office in Bangkok, reflecting this government's strong determination to address this issue. But as our partnership grows, we need to look beyond our bilateral ties and make sure that our partnership contributes more to the region. And we must take this opportunity to help build a better region for all. Some priorities are as follows. First, the support regional frameworks. I believe that we need to continue to support frameworks such as ASEAN, the East Asia Summit or EAS, the ASEAN, the ASEAN Regional Forums and APEX. We recognize Australia's valuable contribution to these frameworks. And in particular, Australia's role is creating a big So these frameworks are very important as they can promote regional peace, growth, and as well as create a sense of communities. Second, develop functional connectivities. 
we should encourage connectivities between regional frameworks and promote cooperation in specific areas, such as disaster management and energy security. Uh, energy Energy securities. Sorry. This will supplement and physical software and people to people connectivities. That Thailand and our partner are already building in ASEAN, East Asia and beyond. It will help bring the ASEAN Pacific, Asia Pacific closer together, increasing trade and investment, and more importantly, it will put us in a strong position to address global challenges together. Lastly, protect the disadvantage. I, uh, we will achieve goal, uh, the regional stability. We must ensure that the full of benefit of growth and stability are enjoyed by all. In particular, women and children, the poor and those with the disabilities we are playing our part in addressing this issue by implementing the Women Development Fund and Universal Health Plan Care Projects. However, regional cooperation on this issue is needed to ensure human security for all in our regions. In closing, I am hopeful that the Thailand-Australia partnership can contribute to make a better region for us all. This will turn Hawaii a good environment for our partnership to continue to grow and for the benefit of Thai and Australian people. So thank you for, for all of you to having me here and our colleagues. I think we came about 60 companies to Australia to make sure that we can enhance our relationship and hope we can welcome you to Thailand. Thank you for your attention.